Welcome to another episode of the Aftershock. Your host here, Richard Carthon. And I know we've been on a hiatus, but happy to be back here in 2023. Um, the month of January has definitely flown by. And, you know, as we go into February, we're starting off pretty bullish. So um, exciting times in crypto land. Uh, a lot of things to be excited and positive about. Um, but we're going to go ahead and dive right into it and get into this week's Aftershock. The Aftershock. So this first week's article is brought to you through uh, FTX lawyers are looking to reap millions from the bankruptcy case. Um, the legal team is from Sullivan and Cromwell, and they have about 150 people on the bankruptcy case. Um, 30 partners are reportedly charging more than $2,000 per hour. So needless to say, there's a lot that's going into this case. A lot of money is being charged, and they're sparing no expense to hopefully try to win this case. Uh, good luck to them. Uh, I, I don't know how that's going to fare, but uh, clearly, they're spending a tremendous amount of money to to get this going. So we'll go ahead and dive into the next article, which has to do with BlockFi. So um, BlockFi's executive to lead Google Cloud's Web3 efforts across Asia Pacific um, with more than a decade of experience, uh, Rishi uh, Rachmandi, who was with Bank of uh, America, Merrill Lynch, before spending the last two years at BlockFi. And as you all know, BlockFi, unfortunately, uh, filed for bankruptcy, uh, now taking their efforts over to Google Cloud's Web3 efforts. So not too surprising that, uh, unfortunately, a lot of the, unfortunately, a lot of the executive team is now going in another direction to find uh, greener pastures and try to get BlockFi behind. But people are still looking into the future, which is Web3. And Google Cloud is looking into that as well. So they got a pretty big uh, person who has experience to help bring that to the next level. So we think that's a pretty interesting piece of news. The next article talks about Mango. So Mango Market sues uh, Evram Eisenberg for $47 million in damages plus interest. So the lawsuit makes the fourth time Mango Market's exploiter has been hit with charges by lawsuits uh, relating to the attack on the DeFi protocol. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Mango Markets was built on top of the Solana ecosystem and unfortunately got hit with quite a few uh, different uh, hacks. So uh, now more and more lawsuits are continuing to come up. So looks like there will be some justice. It's probably still going to be one of those things that's going to take some more time. Uh, but we will continue to look at what happens with this, especially as uh, these lawsuits continue to develop. Next article has to do with Uniswap, with Uniswap holders proposing to ditch Ethereum for Binance Smart Chain Chain to deploy V3 protocol. So almost 80% of Uni holders voted to support the deployment of Uniswap's protocols to V3 on the BNB chain. Um, now, Binance Smart Chain, uh, uh, the BNB chain, it's cheaper. Um, when you look at a lot of the different protocols out there, there's a lot of programmers building on it. So not a huge shock here, but it was almost like a, it was even proposed as a temperature check um, to, to see how Uniswap can continue to evolve. So we're getting away from a lot of these higher gas fees and, and slower transactions and try to move to speed and efficiency. So we will see how this continues to, uh, to progress out. But this is a big move as Uniswap started as an EVM chain, Ethereum, and now looking to go um, to uh, other chains. Our next article brings us to a wormhole hacker who moved $155 million, which is the biggest shift of stolen funds in months. So blockchain transaction history shows that the hacker transferred funds from a DEX and then went into the cycle of funds into different DeFi protocols. So shifting this money and trying to clean it, if you will, within the Web3 space, um, because everything's on public blockchain, you can follow all the transactions and people have time, especially people who unfortunately get hacked for a sub substantial amount of money. So this uh, wormhole hacker is being uh, tracked and monitored pretty closely. and. I think as hacking continues into the future, it's going to get harder and harder because more and more programmers are coming up with these different types of protocols to help pinpoint and get to the, the core faster. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how this one develops. But again, there's a ton of scams that happened last year. I think it was over like $2 billion. Um, 
way, potentially more that ultimately people got scammed out of um, just from pure hacks. Uh, we're not talking about FTX or anything else. We're just talking about from pure hacking standpoint and scamming. So it's this is something that will continue to unravel through the years, but I think will be reduced over time. So as we go into our next article that we're looking at today, FTX says that Wall Street heavyweights are among um, its creditors. Now, in the outbreak of everything that is happening over at FTX, um, advisors has say that the collapsed crypto company owes um, a ton of firms, including Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo Company, uh, bankruptcy court. Um, uh, the, the bankruptcy court documents were showing, and it was a 116-page document that got filed on Wednesday, and it's just showing all the creditors. With you know, there's thousands of entries for all the people that FTX owes. So again, this is going to be something that's going to take a lot of time to fully. Um, develop and get to the core of all the all the mess. But this is unfortunately a gigantic mess. Um, and I know we've been giving you a lot of information on it. And we will continue to keep you updated on what the latest is going on in this particular case. And to wrap this one up for our um, Aftershock round, we are going to be looking at Brave. So Brave announced its alliance with uh, Animoca uh, Brands to boost its Web3 initiatives, which Animoca Brands has been really proactive and in investing in a lot of Web3 companies as an investor, um, from NFTs to just regular Web3 companies. Um, and they're trying to um, work with... Um, Animoca Brands uh, Japan specifically is looking to work with uh, Brave. And the intention was to uh, help uh, the, the brand over at uh, Brave uh, continue to expand. So for those who are familiar with uh, Brave, it's a, it's a browser. It's uh, meant to be uh, a lot more safe and secure and also reward you and that basic attention token. So if you you know watch specific ads and subscribe to those, you then get rewarded in that native token. So they're trying to continue to expand that brand, hopefully be a household name just like Google Chrome is or Safari is. And, and Amoka does a really good job with uh, its publicity and, and marketing and in helping its brands that invest in get a larger. So we think this is a pretty substantial piece of news. Um, if you have any questions, any feedback, please make sure to uh, leave some comments in the description. If you have other things that you think we should be covering, please let us know. If you liked what we had to say today, please give us a like and a subscribe. And as always, uh, we hope you continue to stay crypto current. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Crypto Current. Cryptocurrent is a cryptocurrency and blockchain education platform that's bridging the gap between the curious newcomers who are just discovering the space and the thought leaders who are shaping its future. All opinions expressed by Richard Carthon, the Cryptocurrent team, and their guests on this show are exclusively their own opinions. This show and any other Cryptocurrent production is exclusively for informational purposes. 